Instead of suffering through the YouTube chat, click like and subscribe. And then it is time for the main event. Now, during the break when they were doing the video package, yes. fans were just going nuts with We Want Roman Chance. Mm. Yes. So it's Cody Rhodes versus Solo Sokoa. Bloodline rules, which means anything goes. Solo does his entrance, gets in the ring. We cut backstage. Cody is still on the bus, his own personal private bus. Stops to take his dog for a walk. No better time than to walk the dog than before you go after your main event fight. Stops along the way to say hi to Uncle Arn. They have a talk about friends and enemies. I was hoping Arn would mention his Glock again, but no. No, he says, I talked to a few people. You've still got some friends, he says, and some are on the way. Cody walks more. He finds someone to take his dog. He puts on his 45-pound entrance robe, puts on his two-foot-tall, goofy skull helmet, looks like the weirdest college mascot you ever saw. Solo, I guess, is napping the entire time. And then Cody finally does his entrance. So this match starts. I understand why Solo Sokoa is main eventing SummerSlam. That doesn't mean it was a good idea for Solo Sokoa to main event SummerSlam. Nothing went wrong until the very end. It wasn't his fault. Nothing was bad. But it's so slow and so simple. So idiot-proofed. A lot of nerve pinching, a lot of head butting, a lot of the same old spots Cody does every single time so you know what's coming. It goes on, it goes on, and it goes on. The reason it felt like that is because it was a bloodline rules match, and every single person in the building knew nothing is going to happen until the bloodline comes out. Yeah. And it was like 10, 15 minutes before finally Cody had to hit the crossroads before finally Tama Tonga and Tongaloa hit the ring. And the funny thing is, all night they had been chanting for Roman Reigns. We want Roman. We want Roman. We want Roman. And, of course, you know, they'd done a storyline on SmackDown where the Tongans had taken out Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. Yes, we were specifically told, Cody has no friends left. Yes. Randy Orton and Kevin Owens won't be here. So as soon as Tonga and Tonga attack Cody... It was like, okay, well, here comes Kevin and Randy. But these fans, instead of chanting for Randy or Kevin or Roman Reigns, the three most obvious picks, they start chanting Yeet. Mm. Of all people, of all the people they wanted to show up at this point, they're chanting for Jay Uso. Well, they get Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens rushes to the ring, makes his big return. He gets overwhelmed. And then they hit Randy's music. So apparently Randy and Kevin were like in the back, you know, on the bus. Sure. And these two dudes jump Cody. And Kevin and Randy are like, all right, well. Randy goes, you got this, Kevin. Just send him down. He didn't want to get off the bus. Thought Kevin would handle it by himself, him and Cody together. But... Turns out that it uh, didn't work out that way. And so then Randy had to, he had to leave the bus. And so he jogged calmly down that long-ass aisle. And he's high-fiving fans. <laughs> hey, this. hey, what's going on, guys? It's yeah. a big, giant NFL football stadium. Oh, yeah. There's a long way to get to that ring. He was in no hurry. He was in no fucking hurry. I think if I check the TV now, he may still be jogging in Cleveland. He sauntered his way down, high-fiving the whole way. And the place going nuts the entire time. I mean, he didn't need to sprint. And he gets in the ring, and they run wild, and eventually they chase the dudes away. And it's briefly back to one-on-one -on -one again. Uh. And again, when it's one-on-one, -on -one, like, I don't know what everybody else thought, but it's obvious. Okay, well, we're going to do a few spots. We still have someone else that has to come out. Jacob Fatu. So I'm just waiting. And you could tell, I think, most of the fans knew that as well. Because they're doing near falls and nobody's buying these near falls. Because they know Jacob Fatu still has to come out. And finally he did... And then shit went awry. So Jacob Fatu is running wild. He looks great. It occurs to me, Jacob Fatu should have been in the SummerSlam main event, and Solo Sokoa should have been interfering. Well, he's going to be in a main event at some point I here. It's that. very obvious watching TV. But it would have been better tonight. 
until the very end when he lays Cody across the table and plays the chanting, we want Roman, we want Roman. They don't get Roman. They get Jacob doing a top rope splash through the table and immediately hurting his leg as we have discussed. And he's screaming in pain. He's grabbing his leg. He is from his knees tossing these chairs around. The big sturdy office chairs. These are not light things to toss around. He's a powerful man in great pain. He uh, tries to stand, collapses again. And God bless Solo. He was doing his best, but he was absolutely deer in the headlights here. No idea what to do. And Jacob, with for all we know, a broken leg or whatever, is screaming spots at the top of his lungs, telling him what to do. Get in there with Cody and do some stuff. Well, the problem is, I mean, it's one thing when someone gets hurt and you got to improvise something. But this is like the key moment of the match. Yeah. The whole point of Roman returning was because they were going to double team and kill Cody. And now there's no double team. It's just one on one. So it's Cody and Solo one on one. And everyone, you know, by this point, it's very obvious how this is going to end. And uh, I assume it was Cody who thought of this on the fly. Like, if the least we can do is do a double down and then we'll have. We don't know who Roman will help. So he hits a Cody cutter. They're both down. Roman Reigns music hits. Now, you probably guessed by now I was not as big a fan of this show as Brian was. It was a very long show, and I thought a lot of it could have been edited out or cut, or cut out to make it better. But let me tell you something. When Roman Reigns music hit, in probably in all seriousness, there have never been this many happy people in that specific NFL stadium. <laughs> yes. Bro. It says a lot about the Browns, but... They fucking screamed so loud yes. that the audio was, like, fucked up. Like, they screamed so loud that the mics were all weird. You could hear it. It was just, like, this weird noise because they were peaking, like, all of these. It was just, they were fucking so crazy when this guy showed up. And he's known for his own long entrances. Thankfully, thankfully he didn't take that long tonight. Hits the ring. Superman punts for Solo. Spear for Solo Sokoa. He stares Cody down like he's not sure about whether or not to leave this guy out or not. But he leaves, and Cody hits a crossroads. And, man, people went crazy for this finish. But it took forever to get there. Well, that's a bloodline rules match, brother. And Cody gets the pin. Roman outside the ring. Looks at Cody. He nods. Place goes nuts. We got a new mega powers. We do. Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes. You know, it's too fucking bad that Fatu got hurt because there's not a lot of matches, tag team matches that you could headline a pay per view with. Mm. But fucking Roman Reigns and Cody versus Jacob Fatu and, uh, Solo. and no, Tonga. Oh, yeah. yeah. Tama Tonga. Oh, the champions. For yes. the tag team right. championships. Yes. You could headline a pay per view with that match. Yeah. And it's probably in a, I mean, the word, the early word that I heard, and they did, uh, you know, I've seen people say, well, you know, uh, Jacob Fatu, you know, he walked to the back, kind of. He had, he had somebody literally carrying him halfway to the back. He yeah. limped all his way up the aisle. I, I've seen guys suffer career-ending ACLs who walked off the field, Yes, too, so. he's, he's uh, but I mean, he's probably, we're going to be getting uh, probably Tamatanga and Tongaloa as your tag team champions now. Unlike AEW, I don't think they're going to strip him of the titles and do what they did with uh, Jay White. I think he's just going to be the new one half of the tag team champions. Or I guess they could do solo, but uh, probably uh, Tongaloa, because I'm sure they had a plan for solo after this match. But anyway, uh, yeah, he was helped to the back afterwards, and Roman Reigns and Cody nodded. and I mean, it took a long time to get there, but... We got the return of Roman Reigns. All That's what anyone, people paid for. All the 57,000 people are going to remember is that moment Roman came out. Yeah. In a month from now, probably. They won't remember how long it took to get Plus, there. there's so many fucking storylines you got now coming out of this show. There's yeah. so much they set up on this show to lead all the way to WrestleMania. So even if it wasn't like the greatest show in the ring, it was still some good matches. Mm -hmm. And you got so much with like the doom of the Judgment Day and a new Judgment Day with Liv and Finn and Dominic and... And JD and Carlito and whatever Rhea's going to do, you know, she's going to need That's a partner. That's a good question, actually, yes. Well, you know, there's there's a guy I've been hitting on her for a long time, Jey Uso. Hmm. They didn't bring him out for the Bloodline stuff, so could be Jey Uso and Rhea Ripley against Liv and Dom. You do a program there. You've got everything with Gunther as a new champion. You've got CM Punk and Drew continuing. 
You've got, uh, you know, whatever they're doing with Cody and Roman. I mean, this set up easy road to WrestleMania. So uh, I thought this show was excellent overall in terms of booking and uh, a good show wrestling-wise. So good SummerSlam, I would say. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.